at the same time, Marilyn and Dorothy were both vulnerable women, which men love. That is a fact, okay? Men love vulnerable women because they feel like they can mold and manipulate and take advantage of them. I'm, I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. <laughs> I got this topic suggested to me by a beautiful black woman on YouTube. And I think it's a great topic and, and here's why. One, I was a kid that grew up in foster care and I'm an actor, right? And when you're in foster care, you don't really get raised by anyone. You kind of raise yourself. So I didn't have this like woman figure you know, teaching me femininity and, and how to be a woman and, and all that stuff. And I've talked about that with you guys. At the same time, I'm an actor, I'm a thespian. I do a lot of stage plays. I've done a lot of stage plays and a lot of stage work. And I've played a lot of larger than life women, female characters. For example, Clytemnestra, which is a, a classical Greek character. Tanya, Shakespeare. Those are some women that are larger than life and very powerful. So many characters I play are like this. Especially when I was younger, I didn't feel powerful. I didn't feel, you know, like I could be a woman like these characters. But people would choose me to be a woman like those characters. And then that helped inform who I was. Since I was in middle school, I've been playing strong female characters. So I think that it's really important to study the greats. For example, one of the greats to study, one that we all know and love, right, is Marilyn Monroe. I love Marilyn Monroe. I relate a lot to Marilyn Monroe because we're both Fosties. So we were both former foster kids. She grew up in foster care as well. She loves acting and is a thespian and a study all of the great actors of her time and, and before her, right? She's beautiful, she's light, men loved her. She was the side piece of presidents, right? But of course she was so much more than that. I mean, I absolutely love Marilyn Monroe. And then, when Halle Berry did the Dorothy Dandridge movie, I believe I was in high school when that came out, I was introduced to Dorothy Dandridge. I had no idea that black women did movies during this film noir-esque era, the golden era of Hollywood either, right? So Dorothy Dandridge is, a, is another great classic beauty to study and watch how they move, right? When people talk about these women, we often talk about vulnerability. I feel like if you're playing a character, I think that that's okay to tap into, but in your own personal life, I don't feel like you should have to play with vulnerability. If you look up the definition, you'll see why. It doesn't have anything to do with the softness of a woman. So it just really has to do with like being open to manipulation to me. At the same time, Marilyn and Dorothy were both vulnerable women, which men love. That is a fact, okay? Men love vulnerable women because they feel like they can mold and manipulate and take advantage of them. I'm, I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. Especially a lot of the kind of men that women ideally want. They want alpha males and they want men that make a lot of money. They want a protective guy, but oftentimes a protective guy is controlling, right? And so uh, a lot of times to varying degrees, men want a woman they can mold and manipulate. And I think, again, if you're playing a character, including in the real world, if you want to play a character, right, when you're dating and, and play vulnerable because men really like that. You can go ahead and add that in, but the thing is then 
you're gonna have to reveal at some point, like, actually, I'm not all that vulnerable, you're not gonna manipulate me. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, good luck. So those are two examples of women to study if you wanna study a feminine, sexual, alpha females of their day, right? But they also had a hard time in love as well. So again, I think a lot of that vulnerability stuff played into it where if you're playing into the man's hands then you're being used so you want to have control in some way for yourself too that i feel like they didn't have in their relationship don't forget to hit the notification bell and make sure you are subscribed please thank you let's move along to the two women that we're going to be looking at in this video which are number one cersei lannister Cersei Lannister is a woman to study if you want to come more into your power, your power and your purpose. Cersei Lannister is a character of power and purpose. I'm the queen of the Seven Kingdoms, I'll do as I please. Now fast forward, get real to me now. Every dog need a cat to me, yow. Every horse in the wow. I see hands in the crowd, see white, black, blaze in the pound. Jump, jump. from the floor bounce bounce uh -huh. bounce bounce and she never forgets that one of the things about Cersei that I love is that she always focuses on herself right she's very focused on herself and her goals and her purpose right and her legacy if you'll notice that makes her a not so nice person. And yet and still, men love and adore and want her, right? Because of other attributes that she has, right? Definitely take a lesson from Cersei Lannister on that. I think oftentimes, you know, we're indoctrinated to believe that if we think about ourselves and we care about ourselves, we're doing something wrong. But the reality is, if we don't, who will? That's something that it does not behoove you to throw to the wayside. Really focus on yourself and caring about yourself and putting time into yourself and healing yourself and, and maturing and growing as an individual, gaining all types of skills, right, for yourself because that's what's going to ultimately attract what you're seeking, which is someone like you who is doing the same things, right? Another characteristic or trait about Cersei Lannister, which I love and I think is important to study, is that she goes hard for the people that she loves, right? She goes hard for her kids. She goes hard for her lover, even though that's her brother, right? <laughs> she goes hard about her mother. She really loved her mother and she really hates her brother for being the reason that her mother is no longer with her, right? But she loves fiercely. And I think that that was one of the reasons why Jamie loved her back, right? Because he lost his mother, their mother. A love like that, right? How fiercely she loved him and, and would do anything for him. He then in return felt the same way, right? And she was very much in charge of that. She's classy. Clearly, she's in control. She's hypergamous. She's like Naomi Campbell when it comes to dating. You gotta make as much or more, right? And she got a lot of money, right? And there has to be some benefit for her interacting with you, for her. Or she doesn't need to do it, right? Nothing wrong with having that mentality, especially as you get older, to weed out weak connections that no longer serve you. Another character, which is a lot less known to many people who don't study theater, is Medea. And Medea is from the classic Greek tragedy, Medea. It's not Medea. 
with Tyler Perry. It's not Madea, it's Madea. This is the thing about plays that you need to understand too. You can't really ruin a play for someone because like you're supposed to have read the play. You see what I'm saying? It's not like a movie. Like you're supposed to have read the play. You see what I'm saying? So I won't ruin it for you because it's an entire experience, but I will tell you she is a woman who seeks and gets revenge. The first thing that you can study in Medea is vengeance. And vengeance doesn't always have to be a harmful, brutal thing. I say vengeance is a vehicle for your anger. I know for me growing up, a lot of things that made me angry, I would just be like, well, you know, I put it into my, my extracurriculars, I'd put it into my sports, I'd put it into my art, right? Uh, I put it into, you know, doing well and, 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 and proving that, you know, that kind of stuff wasn't gonna keep me down, right? I think you can put it into working out and proving not just to other people, but to yourself that you can accomplish the things that you wanna accomplish in life, right? Eating well, what have you, right? You can accomplish your goals and you can channel your anger and disappointment into a useful energy. I believe that. And that's essentially what Medea does, right? Um, she's angry that her husband essentially is cheating on her and she decides to turn it into a useful energy for revenge. You know, better than nothing, right? So I think that harnessing your energy and turning it into something useful and, and purposeful is very important and, you can, and we can learn that from Medea. Also we can learn from Medea is assimilation, right? They refer to her as a, as a savage, a wild creature, you know, this like very wild character that came from a barbarian society and they brought her back into their Greek society where there's law and order, right? And Medea learns how to play her role and to fit her place. And that's a large reason why she ends up seeking revenge on her husband who cheats on her, right? And, and leaves her is because she's like, I did everything you asked. I played my role, right? And you will leave me at the drop of a die. She 11 years of them. 11 years. I should have left you as a thousand times. Hey. She had to let him know, but in, cl in classical Greek, theater terms, okay? But the point is, right, that served her for a very long time. They were married for a good while. He didn't he didn't cheat on her after two years together, right? They were together for a long while, and that served her. That helped her to get the things that she wanted in life, playing by the rules of this other society. I think that's very important to study because I feel like a lot of times women don't want to do that, right? They're like, I've done enough as a woman. I, I've done enough, and I get it. But if you want to get, you have to be strategic. Right? And that's something that both Cersei and Medea have that you can definitely learn from. And that's being strategic. I'm all about keeping it real, but there's just a way to play things. And just because you're a woman doesn't mean you have to do what a man tells you to do, date who a man or society or your parents or your family tells you to date. It doesn't mean that you have to be manipulated. It doesn't mean that you have to settle. You can be strategic the way men are in their dating and mating choices to get what you want. So keep that in mind. That's it for this one. And we're gonna do more profiles of bad bitches that you can learn from. Don't forget to hit the notification bell and make sure you are subscribed. Please, thank you. And I'll see you guys next time.